All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. And I guess the first question is what's current to the country? And I begin with the governor. Mm -hmm. The seat remains empty. If we yeah. get uh, the chair, <laughs> will, he'll join us. But the governor, you had a discussion with my colleagues at 9 p.m. on yeah. the NASA strike. Yeah. And this is something that we're not seeing for the first time. And it's really troubling Kenya, especially in the 11 counties that are in partial lockdown right now. Yeah. But the question is, even with the court order and all, we know what's happening. Yeah. What is the solution, governor? Um, this is unfortunate, I can say, that uh, it's unfortunate that the strike had to go on, but uh, this is something that uh, started quite uh, some time in 2016 uh, when the nurses uh, engaged the, the government both at the national level and the county level to have a CBA. Uh, and you know before with the old constitution it was not possible to go on strike the way now it is happening. So that, that the new constitution obviously has given a leeway now for uh, for the for the nurses to go on strike. And that time, uh, you remember the the, the the strike took quite some time. It took quite about six months, and uh, the national government committed that they were going to help the counties because these issues were coming from the period before. Devolution. So okay. they agreed they were going to help the, 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 the counties to pay. And actually, they did pay for six months. They said thereafter, CRA will have to look into the issue and advise or put into the allocation so that now the counties can take over. It has come and passed and nothing has happened. So we are where we are because of that. Because of the CRA? Yeah, the CRA, uh, obviously they advise that if as counties you have to pay, then you <coughs> must make sure that you are able to sustain. Okay. You must show that you can sustain that particular payment. But, but still, some money comes from the national government, right? Yes. To, that goes to paying the nurses? The, 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 we were given money for six months. Only for six months? Yeah. That's the pay, beginning of the devolution? Yes, yeah. To, to pay when the strike was on, okay. to pay for the doctors and also to pay for the nurses. Then after six months, we were supposed to now take it on okay. through CRA allocation, okay. which has not happened up to now. Okay, that's where the trouble. Let me, he checks the governors. Where do you think this problem lies, Senator? I, I think we should uh, uh, stop beating about the bush on this issue. The biggest problem that we have in as far as the payment for nurses is concerned, is that we, as a country, have refused to follow our own laws that we make. Okay. Um, there is not going to be an easy way of doing this, apart from just insisting on the basic. And the basic is, let funds follow functions. Okay. Health is a fully devolved function, say 95 percent devolved. The only way we are going to get out of this is to devolve funds for health sector to the counties and let the county governments manage the health sector within their counties. Okay. That way we will get a breakthrough. Okay. But this thing of government saying they will help county governments uh, to pay nurses, it will not work. It will not work. It will not work. Let me talk to Gikonyo. Where, where do you think the problem lies with this? I think the problem goes back to the onset of devolution. There was a policy that was prepared by the Task Force on Devolved Government that looked at the transition process. And part of what was supposed to be done is there was supposed to be a human resource audit. This, there was also supposed to be a costing of functions. And the funds were supposed <coughs> to be aligned with this. And there was supposed to be a process which would have been husbanded or midwifed uh, through the transition authority to allow a structured way, a systematic way, of moving from the then centralized government into the devolved government. Now, this didn't happen because from the outset, uh, the way the transition to devolved government was set up and the role of the national government was undermined by the national government actors. So I think I agree with the senator, also with the governor. From the outset, the national government has resisted releasing money it previously held. Okay. And the problem, of course, is that health is fully devolved. Majority of Kenyans rely on 
uh, government uh, health service provision. And the money that's supposed to enable them to enjoy this health provision is still being held at, at, the the national yes. at the national level. What is disturbing with this, Gikonyo, is the fact that there are even things that the national government still want to put under control, like the procurement of machines, which I know the governors have been <laughs> against because they're being forced yes, yes, with yes. projects that doesn't come from them. Yes. Yeah, so that's one of the biggest problems. But still, Governor, there are counties that have done really well with the little they have, right? We don't hear of this. Like right now, we know of only 11 counties are on strike. So what does that tell you? No, the, the, this uh, strike uh, was stuck at. Uh, it, it was to start in 11 counties. Mm -hmm. Even mine, you see, it's not on because yes. it's supposed to come on on 18th. Achieve. Even the national government is not on because they are supposed to come on on 11th. Mine is supposed to come on in on 18th. Mm. That's why those counties are quiet. So they started with the 11. 11. Yes. But, yeah. but, but the, the remaining 36 yeah, would yeah, join. Yeah, yeah, they will join okay. thereafter. But uh, the fact is that now uh, we, we have taken all the necessary steps uh, to make sure that uh, a conciliatory uh, process <coughs> starts by the uh, CS uh, labor. I'm hopeful that with the court order now we'll, we have been given 60 days to look into this issue. I hope that in 60 days we will have uh, resolved this particular But government court orders have never sorted issues of strikes <laughs> in this not. country. No, they, they, they have just given us the, the period mm -hmm. to so that we are to negotiate but, and we can... No, but but uh, can, uh, can I, think, I think there's a problem there. Yeah. Uh, see the timing of the entry of the cabinet secretary for labor into this matter. Okay. He comes in and pronoun pronounces himself on this matter two days to the strike. Yes. Yes. There was a notice of more than 21 days. Yes. Where was he? So there is no seriousness. Ken, you should ask, you should ask viewers, what on earth is the Ministry of Health doing with more than 90 billion Kenya shillings at the national level, and yet you are giving peanuts to the people to who the are counties. supposed to be running yeah. health facilities and infrastructure in this country. There's no seriousness on the part of the national government on this matter. Why do you think they want to hold on? Why, why do they still have to hold on the 25%? I think you said they do 75%. I, I, they do, I think, my own thinking, my own thinking is that these are just interests, They're just interests. Mm -hmm. It explains, it begins to explain why you would force governors yes. to, to sign contracts for leasing of medical equipment. And, and when you look at that report, because you came to the Senate, I'm, I'm telling you it's a, very, it's a very funny, weird report. Yes. What are we leasing? We are leasing gloves. We are leasing stretchers. We, we are leasing consumables. Scissors. 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 Yeah. How do you lease scissors? And that's and what switch? the governors pay for? Yes. Of course. Yes. And, and the money is deducted at source. Yes. It doesn't even come to at them. At treasury. Yes. Even which, go to the, the, which violates the law yeah. also. Yeah. Okay. Because money is not supposed to be deducted at source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just the, comes to the county. Then if you have to pay, you have to pay. Yeah, this has yeah. been very contentious, Gikonyo. Why, why, perhaps tell me also in your mind, why does the government want to hold? The national government still wants to hold that amount of money. In any setting where you have devolution coming through popular will, not through political, ideological uh, movement, you will have resistance. Okay. Because the constitution was actually a people's process, people driven, and the fundamental issue was resources. It was about resources should not be held at the center to benefit a few. And the reason these resources have to be held at the center is because um, of the political economy of corruption in this country and also uh, the ability of those in political power to influence where money goes. Okay. So really, it's about if you have only uh, a, a few shillings, you won't be able to undertake big procurements that are able to yield Make a difference. benefits. Yes. So unfortunately, um, you know, we haven't dealt with a culture of corruption. And devolution did not come to deal with a culture of impunity. Uh, so when you have devolution and this impunity continues, you're going to see, um, you know, kind of these kind of decisions that are made. Even if uh, the procurement of this equipment was well intended, 
it was implemented in a very bad way. And even the World Bank themselves said, why are you buying this very expensive, high-level equipment mm. where you don't have basic, uh, you're not supporting the, the mm. lowest level mm. of healthcare provision? For instance, uh, when uh, the government, when the president talks about the big four and talks about universal health care, you actually cannot implement universal health care without a very strong foundation of health care. Because universal health care can only succeed when you have basic health care accessible at the lowest level. So universal health care, the, the big four, should actually be putting money into the level one, the, the lowest the level, the lowest it's level, necessary. the second level, so that majority of people are treated for their basic ailments at that level not having to go to Kenyatta for referral of basic issues that, that could have be been treated with. at okay. the county level. Yes, exactly. So it is upside down. Okay. So not only is there a strike ongoing, there are other factors playing out that could seriously undermine health uh, service delivery. Okay. Yes. Governor, do you believe if the money that is being held by the national government was to go to the county as it is, it will sort out our health It problem? will make a big difference, I can tell you. Okay. Now, even at the moment, we are talking about universal health coverage. Ask yourself, how much money has been budgeted within the counties to take care of universal health coverage? Mm -hmm. Nothing. How have, the, how, how, how have you involved the counties? I can tell you, even me, as a governor, I have not attended any workshop mm -hmm. to do with Big Four. And when the big four actually involved, devolved functions. functions. All of like health. Yeah. All of look, them. Look, yes. look, 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 oh, actually, yeah. all of them. Yeah. 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 Look at the budget. We are still struggling with the same budget that we came, as if nothing is happening. And the government has decided on priorities, four big priorities that are even devolved functions, and no money, even through grants or through direct allocation, that is going to counties. How then do you expect to implement this particular big four agenda in okay. the counties? Okay. Uh, Senator, as you respond to this, I want to end this topic. Um, Thomas Luangu says, well, we all agree that devolution is the best thing for the country. There has been myriads of challenges on accountability and utilization of resources. Really address, and you need to address this with the one engine. We need more and steady funding to the counties, but accountability remains a problem. So if we give them the 90 billion shillings, you know, what will happen? At the end of the day, they'll get 2 billion shillings each, just roughly. But what will happen in terms of accountability? But, but you know, we don't, we, we, don't, we don't kill the principle because, because the principle is devolution. My understanding is that it's supposed to achieve two principal issues. One, give an opportunity uh, to the people at the grassroots to have a say in the management of resources allocated to their counties through public participation. So they have a say in what they want. Do, do I want a CT scan machine or do we want uh, uh, bandages? What exactly do we want? They have a say in the use and management of resources allocated to them. Okay. And secondly, it empowers the people services and development get down to the people. Now, as to whether if we give uh, governors all the funds that should follow functions that are devolved, as to whether they will misappropriate those funds, th that should not be a consideration in deciding whether we will devolve the funds or not. The, the, the thieves, and I'm, I'm sorry to say this, the thieves will have to steal. They will steal and yes. they will face the law. Mm -hmm. But those who want to work will work and deliver services to the people. Okay. Yes. Okay. As, as we wind up, let's listen to this soundbite. It is now becoming an all too familiar tune. Each time governors are mentioned in regards to spending in the counties, they have already answer. It is not true. I'm allotted for. And that is the answer given as a response to a new report by the controller of budget detailing how counties spent money in the first quarter after the 2017 elections. The report says a big chunk of money forwarded to counties was used for personal emoluments and little or nothing was set aside for development. That report is very erroneous and I think uh, you will be hearing more from the control of budget. 
As you read that report which I saw yesterday being discussed, you have to look at the wider macroeconomic uh, factors which are affecting collection of taxes and therefore uh, the inability of national government to disperse money within the set schedule within that same period. According to them, there are important nuggets that should have been put into consideration when the report was being prepared. Releasing it as it is, they say, has created a wrong impression and their political opponents are taking advantage. The fact is that we had had just an election uh, the other year. There was a delay in this disbursement for funds. And the funds started coming in October, when obviously the first quarter was over. The first quarter ends at the end of September. So since the money came in in, in, uh, in October, there was no expenditure on development the first three months. Baibo Baanda kuzunguka na kuandika maripoti ya uongo kusema hakuna kasi mefanya. Treasury watuwa pesa. Treasury watupatia sisi kaunti pesa zetu. The report by the controller of budget says almost all counties had allocated little money for development and large amounts to recurrent expenditure. In some counties, money for recurrent expenditure was at 70%. All right, that was troubling and many governors dismissed yes. that report, but I'd like you to go first yes. based on that report. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, before you even your budget is accepted, it's in law that at least you must allocate 30% of your budget to development. So someone can't wake up and say that you allocated nothing. The budget wouldn't have passed one at the counter assembly. Okay. One, it would have not even been uh, also passed by the control of budget. Okay. But since we were coming out of an election, the money was delayed actually for, for three months. We didn't get money. We were only getting salary. And you see, our budgets are hooked on the IFMIS. So even if you are given salary and you want to spend something else, you cannot enter the IFMIS system. It will only accept the salary item. So that is what happened in the three months. Okay. So that that uh, report was very erroneous. <laughs> and uh, 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 very erroneous. I don't yeah. know what you think, Senator. I, I'm not very sure about erroneous. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could see the senators put them to task. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not very sure about erroneous. Yeah. Um, because, you know, one of the ways um, with due respect to, to Governor, yeah. uh, the chair of um, uh, COG, there is a pattern that is developing in the county governments, yes. where governors, yes, they, they pass, they, they, they push MCRs to pass their budgets, mm. uh, which are okay. Mm. But then after that, they do so many supplementaries. Mm. And it is through these supplementary budgets that they bastardize their own initial budgets mm. and their original plans. Mm -hmm. um, I will not be surprised that, yes, on paper, the budget would look very good, but on implementation, you could get those zeros. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But what happens if they are only given uh, money that is sufficient for uh, recurrent expenditure? Do they divert it? No, give it, give it to them. Give, give it to you, them. You, give it to them. There is a problem. But there is a problem in terms of delays in disbursements. Yeah. Yes. That's a big problem. Okay. Where, where they just get some little money. Uh, but, but that should never also be an excuse yeah. uh, to yeah, misappropriate too. the little money that comes in. I think there is a mix of issues here because one, uh, there is a problem with the disbursements. That one is on record and that shouldn't be the case. That is not, it could maybe even be argued constitutionally because counties are supposed to get adequate money. There is also a problem with the IFME system, both at national and county level. That system was again imposed and as it has been sorted out, there, it continues to have problems. Yeah. Uh, there's another problem of those transitional issues that were unresolved, like we said. Mm -hmm. Some counties inherited a very huge wage bill um, and continue to grapple with that. But that should not then um, cause the, the COB report to be, uh, you know, brushed aside. Mm -hmm. Because there are some very pertinent issues that she raised about accountability. 
about the resources that are available. One, revenue collection is below par in a number of the counties, not in all, but in some. So if revenue collection was going up, uh, for instance, in Nairobi County, Nairobi County has very high potential for revenue collection. Revenues are going down instead of going up. So much as the county has a huge uh, uh, labor force that was supposed to be rationalized through an intergovernmental procedure because there was supposed to be the role of national government in assisting to maybe to rationalize the staff of the county. That process never took place okay. and the county therefore struggles with that historic issue. But the county then has its own challenges in terms of accountability of its own revenue processes, mm. the effectiveness of its own revenue process, putting in place audit committees that are supposed to check What's, what, uh, how the county is spending money, okay. preparation of implementation reports. Counties have a problem in preparing these documents. Even the national government is not preparing implementation reports. Some of the, some of the ministries are not. Yet this is a requirement under the Public Finance Management uh, Act. Yeah. So we have a problem of a lack of compliance under devolved government, board, yes. yeah. not but just county. And I, I believe, Governor, you'll my, agree my there friend, is a challenge there. Uh, my and friend, it should I will, be a priority. I, I, I will agree with you that there is a challenge. Mm. But the, all these challenges are brought by lack of money. You see, for, uh, for example, internal audit is very important. Go out there and check in the counties how many have established proper internal audit. For example, in my own county, I will work with about 40 people in the internal audit. Now, there are only eight. Because I can't employ more. You can pay more. Mm -hmm. Because there are no funds. Mm -hmm. So, how do you expect me now to have effective internal controls if I cannot employ enough internal auditors? I want to implement a, a computerized system so that people are not able to handle cash. That system needs me to spend 500 million, which I cannot do. People because you can't get the money. I can't get the money. So I, I think the senator is here. Mm -hmm. This is now a chance mm -hmm. to look at a fresh costing of function, which has never been done, mm -hmm. as my colleague has said here. Look at these issues before we move in the next round of development. Let me, let me put a context to what my colleagues are saying. Yeah. Um, on the Public Finance Management Act of 2012, on the issue of release of uh, finances uh, to counties. Mm. The law is very clear, as you're saying, very, very clear, that the, the National Treasury should release funds to county governments um, in the first week of the month mm. and not later than the 15th yeah. day yeah. of every quarter. Yeah. But that never happens. Never. That never happens. It, it's just a breach of the law. Uh, secondly, on the issue of revenue collection. And, and I think really that there's a problem there, Governor. Let's just agree. There's a problem there. And the problem is, you know, even CRA as an incentive for counties that continuously Im show improvements in collection of their own revenues. Because, because own revenue is, is a major source of revenue for the running of uh, county functions. But what has happened, and let's face it, Governor, what has happened is that a good number of governors will collect revenue, they don't report the money collected. To Treasury? Yes. But I thought it was law, you should collect it, and submit straight just, to Treasury. Just, as, <laughs> just as it is law yes. for Treasury to release money in and the first don't. week and they and don't. They don't. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So it's just no. impunity. Uh, That's uh, what uh, it uh, is. Uh, they uh, collect uh, and pocket. No, no. Uh, really? I, I, I don't think there is such a county uh, which pocket. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't Where do you have it? Where do you have it? Where do you Why can't you give me an example of a county? That will be impunity. The figures have shown. How come those governors have not been because uh, the issue is that our collection of revenue, the lines of collecting revenue are limited. They only two. Mm -hmm. It's only uh, the, the rates, land rates, mm -hmm. and in the Levis. and the service, okay. service charge. 
That's what you are supposed to do. Advertising. That, 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 that's what advertising, advertising. has not developed well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we, 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 are, out of we, 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 we are in a rural base. Yeah. Nairobi here will make money on yeah. advertising. But yeah. in a rural setup like ours, it's difficult. That is the only the major, if you look at the constitution, mm -hmm. it's only those two. It's all the sense. It's all the sense. There's so much. There's so much. I think so the much government government is trying to mislead us. Please. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> there is but, so much. But let me says, tell you, uh, there there is is one one revenue, on revenue, yes. revenue yes. collection, yes. Yes. I can agree we have not done well. Okay. And we have not done in, well. Intentionally or by design? Not intentionally. Yes. Not intentionally. But because we have not had enough money to put proper systems. Okay. Because you need to computerize mm. this particular You need money system. to collect money? Uh, yeah, you need money to collect the money. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> you need to spend money to collect the money. Governor, now it sounds like you're defending the indefensible. I'm not, I'm not defending. I've yeah. accepted yes. that we have not done very well yeah. when it comes to revenue collection, mm. including myself. Okay. And that's Governor, an area Governor, that we need it is to on record. Out. It is yeah. on record. Yeah. That the accounties, and not mention counties here, yeah. but the accounties that are spent hundreds of millions of shillings mm. yeah. to procure a systems for revenue, revenue collection. Yes. Right. And those counties continue uh, to collect less every less. year. Less. Not only that, some less have procured those systems and then have decided not to use them. Not to use them. Not, they're, and they're so that working. they can Who procure this? another one. <laughs> and we know Who them. We know them. Why can you name them? <laughs> <laughs> now that the chair is here, you yeah, know so them. Here. Further yeah. to the so, point, yeah. uh, CRA yeah. has gone around the counties developing revenue enhancement plans. Yeah. And I've happened to look at one of them for one of the particular counties. Yeah. And they provide very basic recommendations, yes. such as the level of qualification of the staff who should be deployed, consolidation of revenue streams, yeah. how you should report on revenue streams, mm. collection through a banking system, not through personal, mm. you know, very basic common sense. Mm. It's not about a lot of cash investment. So when you see a county that has a revenue enhancement plan that says you're collecting at about 50 or 60 percent of your potential, mm. And then that county does not implement these basic issues. Yeah. I think that is what the COG should be prioritizing as best, yeah, yeah. That's best practice. And for those who aren't adhering, you know, let it let it be known. Okay. We are letting down devolution. Yeah, on, on revenue, I've said you we, you we, agree. The problem yeah. we have, uh, we have, big uh, problem. We have yes. not done very well. Mm. Okay, but on uh, on uh, expenditure controls, I think we have improved. We have improved. Yeah, right. yes, yeah. That's true. So we have to work hard on that, right. on, on that, on, on revenue collection. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm still here with Governor Weekly for Parang. I have uh, Onjiro Gikonya and I have Senator Wambua here. We're speaking about devolution and ahead of the devolution conference. It's interesting to see what Raila Odinga said was last year during the devolution conference and mm. we're heading to another one. So, lady and gentlemen, I like to rethink what he's thinking. Is there space even for rethinking the structure of the counties? Let me begin with you. Um, rethinking for what purpose and what has gone wrong. Because one, there is politics around uh, devolution. There is those interests. Um, and if, depending on who you ask, you'll get a different answer. Now, if I were to look at this as the purpose of devolution is what the senator said, is to bring development closer to the people, to bring political decision making closer to the people. It's very important that my county assembly member is very accessible to me. And if uh, the, the laws of accountability, the, 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 the integrity laws, were working more effectively, it would be very easy to remove that MCA member. Mm. So devolution came to give citizens political uh, accountability, not just economic uh, sustainability. Of course, development is very important. Economic development and sustainability are very important. They are not the only parameter. So before talking about restructuring devolution, we have to agree, <coughs> what are we looking at? We have to look at issues of inclusion. If we consolidate, if we uh, resize the counties, what happens to the issues of inclusion? What happens to the issues of political representation mm -hmm. and public participation and say, which are not yet, mm -hmm. actually have not even, we are maybe at 20% of public participation, <laughs> the way we see it in Makwemi. Mm -hmm. All the counties should be vibrant and the, cities should be, uh, the citizens should be the ones who are uh, uh, pushing the county development agenda. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. So before we restructure, we have to say what has gone wrong? What part doesn't work? Mm -hmm. For instance, there was a sense that maybe the Senate 
should um, be uh, stronger representatives of the counties and there should be a kind of delegate system where the senators are selected through some county voting mechanism, not universal suffrage. There are those kind of discussions which you could then say that makes sense. Maybe even with the members of parliament, there's a need to say, what is the role of a member of parliament? Maybe they should be on a, on a party list as opposed to going for universal suffrage so that they can focus on policy uh, role. But we need to be very careful when we talk about uh, Oh, changing the structure. Changing. First of all, we haven't even implemented urban areas. Urban areas are a very important part of service delivery and economic development mm. of counties. They can be implemented because, as the <coughs> governor has told us, resources are still being held centrally. Okay. So we haven't even begun implementing the devolution we have. Mm -hmm. And we are thinking of changing it. Kenya, I think Kenyan politicians are in love with reform, mm -hmm. constant yeah. reform, <coughs> to make people think a lot is happening. And unfortunately, Wanjiru, we don't have the other side, as the national yes. government here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes. still we can speak about this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Governor, yes. you have tested devolution, and you know what's happening I, down there. I have done that. Yes. And I think uh, myself, what I would advocate for is that um, we should strengthen what we have. Okay. Uh, we strengthen, we make sure that there are more resources going to counties, and we should come up with the proper legislation that will guarantee that my officer doesn't need to be coming here all the time, every other two days, is coming here to chase for a signature here mm. and a signature there. Mm -hmm. But also, I think, uh, listening to what uh, Raila said, uh, we might have made a mistake here and there, that the bombers draft actually would have put us into a very viable, uh, uh, viable structures at the, count, uh, at the count level. But that's now what... Uh, under the bridge. Mm. Uh, what we should do is just to, to look at what have we not done properly. Mm. With what we have. And, okay. yeah, with what, right. and then how do we address right. those particular issues right. so that we strengthen devolution. And I can tell you, with all these problems that we have had, actually devolution is working. To some extent, it is. Okay. Senator, so, same I, question. I, would, I would actually say, to a very great extent, yeah. devolution yeah. is working. Yes. And, and there is one thing, uh, uh, Ken and colleagues, that you cannot touch now. Mm -hmm. The architecture of devolution mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. Not now. But the question then to ask is, are we, are we old enough uh, to make the determination that we have either failed or succeeded? Mm -hmm. Remember, you're only six, months, six years, six into, years. Into, this, into this uh, system. So, and if there is anything to do uh, with um, maybe uh, uh, touching the infrastructure or the architecture of devolution, then I would say that thing would be to devolve further. What do I mean? Okay. I mean, now power and resources are concentrated at the county headquarters. Why can't we have a conversation about devolving to the sub-counties? So that the sub-counties are strengthened and more empowered to make some, some bit of semi-autonomous decision on their spending of their small little budgets, and when we establish that, then we can devolve further to the wards. The only architecture that we can deal with is devolving further, not devolving upwards. Ken, can I, I really like what the senator is saying, because it goes to the heart of uh, sovereignty, exercise of sovereignty, that power should be as close as possible. There is a provision in, under Article 174 on subsidiarity. And I think, Governor, one of yes. the challenges is that governors have not effected the principle of subsidiarity mm -hmm. and are not decentralizing. Mm -hmm. Because you can devolve, mm -hmm. which means you give political and financial decision-making power mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. a lower level yes. constitutionally. Yes. But counties are required to decentralize. For instance, I'll give a very practical example. In Nairobi, we were looking at the issue of solid waste management mm -hmm. and saying to do this effectively, you need ward level committees mm -hmm. at, uh, that comprise citizens and government officers at the ward level. 
And because they are officers at that level, and they are officers also at sub-county, some of the procurement functions, such as identification of these solid waste collectors, should be devolved. Mm. These decisions shouldn't be made mm. at, at, at mm. City Hall. Mm. They are still being made at City Hall. Mm. So counties have refused to decentralize. Yes. And so you don't really need to go back I into the constitution. The I've said it is the capacity. They but have not refused to be involved. The reason I would we say they've refused, yeah. we, the we, reason I'd say maybe refused, maybe it's not been an agenda, yeah. is they have employed staff. Mm. So you have uh, government officers who are at sub-county mm. and at ward level. Yes. Village level, not really because of the huge wage bill. But those officers, their terms of reference still require them to keep reporting back to the to center. The headquarters. So it's a policy decision. Mm. Mm. When you have procurement that is still centralized, mm. it's a policy decision. Mm. So for, I think, and I urge that the, under your tenure, uh, Governor, you can prioritize decentralization yeah. the way McQueenie mm. has done, yes. where decisions are actually being made bottom, bottom, yeah, bottom up. up. Okay. And in fact, if the governor wants to implement projects, he has to go to the ward level budget making mm. uh, meeting mm. to advocate mm. for his projects so that they are endorsed at that level. Because once the ward has endorsed the priorities of the county, they are not, re they are not re clarified, they are not changed. They are only streamlined and harmonized as the process moves up. Mm -hmm. So there are already examples where there is subsidiarity, where there is bottom-up decision making, but it is not being taken up by the county. So this is another area where uh, the governors need to really come round. Because if they don't decentralize power, they are recentralizing at the, cen uh, at the center, at county level, mm -hmm. and they are undermining yes. the national government. Yes, there's no difference in the national government. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and and, and there's a the challenge. challenge, Ken. Yeah. You, you will have county strategic uh, plans at the headquarters. The assumption being that those plans will be effective in every ward within that county. But the truth of the matter is, the reality on the ground is that the needs and aspirations of different wards are very different from those of another from ward. Another yeah. So, so it, it's, if, I actually agree with, with uh, the right Honorable Raila Amolo Dinga, that we should buy the bullet and look at the architecture of uh, devolution to devolve it further, okay. to go down. Downwards, yes. not upwards. Not upwards. Yeah, but, but, um, uh, let me tell you that uh, we have uh, the county integrated development plans. And this county development address issues even from the wards. If you look at them, they address those issues from the wards. But as I've said earlier, even employing uh, village administrators, it's, it's, you can't manage. And that's why we started by saying yeah, we see. must make sure yeah. that funds follow Functions. functions so that counties are properly yeah. funded like, uh, like function number 14 yes we, we we have not been able to implement fully I, it is there i i yeah. think i will beg to differ on that yeah. because what is function, Makueni, 14? function 14 is building structures for yeah. public participation for it's the responsibility the of the county government yeah. Yeah. Makueni has done it yeah. Makueni did it even before they passed a policy mm. on how to do it mm. actually they first for them they went all the way to the village in some places, like for instance, Nairobi has 85 wards, has numerous villages, it won't be possible. Mm -hmm. But the ward can take up the function of the village. Mm. Yes. Right? So the point is, uh, it's not just about money. It's also about the political will, the, will. the ideological right. acceptance that we must empower citizens to make decisions okay. and to hold the... So long as and, and there's also that issue of capacity, so right? Is the issue of capacity. Yeah, whichever yes. form there will be money for it. Whichever little. Or they, or they should be. Yeah, yeah, there they should must, be. Yes. There must be money. There there must be. Be. Otherwise, to say that you will use goodwill to do that, mm -hmm. you will be lying. Even but with the goodwill, but without possible. the money, you're saying it's it impossible. Yeah, but okay. the point I'm saying... I've not saying seen what McQueen has done, but <laughs> the point I, I can tell you that... Uh, yeah. Of course it will cost uh, money. Unless you are using some NGOs to support to do, you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, well, you need... Like me, with the, with the 60 words, you can imagine. Well, yeah. Makweni does pay, mm -hmm. um, but the issue is why not pay for public participation? Why does public participation become the item that is so expensive? That's why I'm saying it's more of an ideological shift 
to recognize devolution is about the people. The people. Mm -hmm. It okay. is not about the county government. Mm -hmm. It is not about the governor. It is not about the county assembly <coughs> member. It is about the people, and so it should be a priority. But then also there is the possibility of partnership with civil society. Mm -hmm. Makweni does do that. And if you do it properly, actually, the, under the local authorities, there was the LASDAP, the Local mm -hmm. Authority Service Delivery Action Plan. This was a public participation process that helped to identify projects at the ward level. There was not a shilling paid to people to attend the meetings to prioritize. Committees were set up, not a shilling was ever paid. When people understand that... Try it now. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> allow me to complete. When, uh, when people are assured... That is theory. No, it is not, excuse me. Yeah, can you come? Can, I, I'm giving you an example. <laughs> there, it is recorded. Uh, people were not paid and they engaged. In yeah. fact, um, there are some counties that had excellent last up. Some had very poor last up. Mm. Because it's about the understanding yeah. of how you do it and how you... When people understand that when I engage, my input will be able to influence outcomes. Mm. They will not they, ask for allowance. Okay. But when they you. know, when they know, <laughs> when they know yeah. that we are in a game, yeah, I will you have, need to show I engage. I, I will want to hire need, you as it, a consultant. Uh -huh. yes. So you go and talk to them as I stand behind you. Uh -huh. That this is what we are supposed to do. And let them know. Ask ask <laughs> but why aren't you going to hire me? Why aren't you looking at the evidence? Yeah, so There's another example. In yes. Malindi, before again implementation, there yeah. was a whole structure that was built up and the county was able to increase its revenue three times okay. yeah. once it built the structure. Again, they never paid. Mm. Because when people understand that their involvement will influence outcome, it increases le the legitimacy of the process okay. and they don't ask to be paid. Mm -hmm. When it's not legitimate, they, are, they know they're in a game. You better pay them so that yeah. they can make you look it good. Is, yeah. That and is where <laughs> most counties are. Governor, as you speak, I, I, remember, <laughs> I remember last week yes, uh, yes. the speaker said something. Yeah. He, he talked about, you know, I have been there and I, I have known about this public participation. And I want to tell you, let's stop a game, the game of public mm. participation. Mm. You call a few of your friends and yeah, claim yeah. this public okay. participation. Yeah, yeah. The speaker said it, yeah, it's yeah. because they said it. Yeah, yeah. You know, me, I have been <laughs> able to attend one, one to the budget one, initial mm. stages. Mm. And you know, you will go there, uh, people come in large numbers, and they say, oh, uh, Governor, you have come. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a game. Why did you, uh, yeah. why, why did you elect you? Uh -huh. We elected you to do that work. Yeah. Why are you coming back to us? Yeah. No. You know, you know, have to admit the culture <laughs> you know, of. Uh, you, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 in French, they say yeah. Gonya. Yeah. 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 When you leave, they say yeah. Governor. Yeah. Give me something. When, you know? when people ask to be paid, it means your process is has been set up for in a faulty manner. It lacks no, legitimacy. Not, no, no, no. Really, not, not really. Not really. I agree, agree. But, there is a culture. Yes, there's a culture. But yeah. what I'm saying the is mm -hmm. there's a culture. You know culture has to be broken. There's a yeah. culture of impunity. There's been a culture of centralization. The constitution came to change negative cultures. Mm -hmm. So we can't use culture as the excuse. Okay. Have you done enough no, to change but the culture? The culture but, but but remember, remember, why did it work in let, some places? My colleague, um, remember, remember get, there yeah. is opportunity cost lost. Mm. That person has come there. Yes. He would have uh, done something Productive to, to, uh, to earn a living. Mm. And now you have uh, kept him there waiting or her waiting for the whole day. You Why think he will for go the whole day? Mm -hmm. And, and I, don't even think, I, I don't even think I don't even think we'll ever get back there if you are ever there at yes. all. Yeah. Because you see what has happened, precedents have been set. Yeah. That that when we met yesterday yeah. uh, in public participation forum, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were given 200 yeah. shillings, 300 yeah. shillings, whatever amount of money, yes. facilitation yes. Uh, to, to come. And even and political, to, that's a So, so, so there will be no explanation tomorrow yeah. why I should it's come yeah. and you don't uh, facilitate me. Yes. You know, we have Let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is that public participation in itself is, is a big scandal. Mm. Because what happens is that the governor here, and I'm not saying him, yeah. um, will call a few of his friends, people that are known to him and, and are bought into his idea of what he wants to do. They will sit, collect signatures, and, and, and get the allowances. He will go and implement his projects, and there will be a document to show that there was a public participation. 
But what we have done in the Senate, now we have a public participation bill, yeah. which is before uh, the Senate now, uh, to define really what is public, public participation. participation. Okay. Public participation is a political process. So first of all, I any politician is a bit afraid of public participation. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if you empower those publics mm -hmm. to move without being paid, That's very true. they will hold it to account. Yes. So number one, please mm -hmm. understand as we hear these ex some somewhat a bit of truth but a I lot of excuse it, it's a bit of, <laughs> it's a bit of but the point is there yeah. are the beauty is that yeah. we have actual testimonies yes. and actual Watchable. examples yes. yeah. uh, there is the community based monitoring system that mm. was run again by local authorities yes. even before the counties came on board there is Makueni county and there are a few others uh, there is the one I was telling you about in Malindi. These issues are documented. Okay. People were not paid. And it is because, is your system legitimate? Are the notifications given adequately? Do people understand why they are coming? Public participation doesn't start with a meeting. Mm. It starts with the sensitization. You have to sensit the, the officers need to know what they are doing. The public also need to be made aware. Further to that, let me tell you, even in Nairobi County, which has you know, a lot of uh, challenges. We've been tracking the budget uh, making process. People showed up when uh, Kidero started calling people for public participation. They would come in numbers. Uh, maybe not so much in Kilimani, Kileleshwa. There people didn't come. Yeah, but if you go to lower income, people would show up. By the third year, people were chasing county officers. They told them, we don't want you here. Because last time we gave you projects and you have not implemented, implemented okay. yes. Okay. So if you see people getting angry about a process, it's because it's they want the development. Okay. So let us not um, really uh, treat the, uh, the public with such disdain to say people just <laughs> want money. People want development. There are those outside outliers that can only move Some for people. money. Yeah. But there are those who really will even go over and above, okay. and we'll show up for this. Now we should have more of those. Yeah. And I'd like we to, have enough. I'd Let's like to encourage play, uh, them. I'd like to play the soundbite by Deputy Pre uh, President William Ruto on the same subject that we began with, the fact of restructuring. <laughs> but even as we prepare for that, there's a, a, a text that I've been sent from one of uh, uh, the county mem members of the county assembly who says that the culture is so much entrenched that when they go out there, no one cares about the projects. They care yeah. about, at the end of the discussion, mm. what well, is Mwishimiwa like, yeah. giving me? And that's exactly what I think the yes, governor is yeah, saying. Yeah. It's about culture. It's, it's about, about culture, culture. yes. I, I, we need to learn. Yes. We need to learn. And mm. what you're saying is also true. Yeah, yeah. But this is how we've been bred. Let's yeah. listen to this. Kenya. <laughs> Tuliamua ya kwamba tutatoa mamlaka, tutatoa rasilmali kutoka Nairobi ije lamu, ije mashinani. Hakuna uamuzi mwingine yeyote itafanywa eti kurudisha mambo ya ugatuzi kutoka mashinani atiende Nairobi. Hiyo haitawezekana kwa sababu wa Kenya hawata kubali. Yale yataendelea ni vile tutaongeza na fasi ya kuzidisha kuleta mamlaka kutoka Nairobi ije mashinani kuongeza rasilimali kutoka Nairobi ije mashinani that is the direction devolution is going to go going forward there will be no discussion on how to fold counties or how to fold the devolution so that we can centralize things anymore Coming from a senior politician of the deputy president's caliber, I think the matter is conclusive. So my interest in this is there's a, a, a divided opinion in this. You listen to the other side, they're saying this, this other side is saying, but uh, generally I think the discussion about uh, what can happen to devolution is one of the issues that will be there during the referendum, yeah. right? Hopefully. Uh, hope, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully it will be one of the reasons. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And now I want to talk about... Uh, uh, the count, before we finish with the devolution conference, I'd like to talk about the counties and the perception of Kenyans. Uh, and this isn't from the researches that have been done. The amount of money that has been sent to the counties, most of it, forget about the examples that Wanjiru is giving us, most of it has been used wrongly. I don't know if you agree. Let me begin with Wanjiru. I think there are reports eh, that actually we can, it's not, we don't have to use hearsay. We have Auditor General reports, we have control of budget reports. So when you say most of it wrongly, I think even I would have to disagree. Because paying county staff is not wrongly. 
uh, you have to pay staff, you have to run the machinery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what the fact is that development expenditure has been low. There has been maybe on the county assembly side very high expenditure on personal trips that are not relevant to the work that they are doing. So there has been abuse in that regard. Um, in regard to the Auditor General, there have been um, maybe up to 40, 50 percent or maybe even higher uh, of lack of accountability in terms of how the money is spent and um, unaccounted. So, uh, you know, in that regard. But you can't say it most has been spent wrongly. Uh, even when you look at the Auditor General report, some of the queries are, yes, the expenditure took place, but the reporting um, you know, was maybe not done in time, not done uh, accountably. So, yes, there is corruption, but there is development going on. If you compare devolution now and f the 50 years when we didn't have devolution, that is the question you'd ask. Okay. Ask Kenyans, are services closer to you? Do you go to the county for health services where you used to go, like in Turkana? It was the Catholic church that used to deliver health services. So, Devolution is being felt on the ground, mm. despite the problems. So maybe the broad statements are not are fair. You, are, you, are you asking us to forget about the broad statements and focus on the little good that has been done? No, I'm saying can we be factual mm -hmm. and just say let's pinpoint what, what has worked. One devolution has brought development. It has brought a middle class in every part of the country. You know those uh, officers county assembly officers, county government officers are a middle class. Once you have middle class with that kind of salary, they are making demands on services, they are buying land, they are making acquisitions. So you have development actually being spurred just by the infrastructure of the counties, mm. first of all. That is a good <coughs> thing. Counties then are, apart from paying their staff, they are spending on development. But the truth of the matter is the money for development is not enough. Okay. One some has been misappropriated actually too large an amount national government and county government too large an amount is not used accountably and then there is not enough money going to the county governments right. okay. for yeah. basic service delivery yeah. so there are huge gaps that actually could undermine the quality going forward what we should see what, what, what is important and when i should know this that uh, counties are accountable and are accountable in accordance with the law. They are subject to audit. There has been several audit reports coming up. Criticize the counties on the expenditure, but uh, maybe the people I would blame are the senators. Uh, <laughs> the, the senators have been given a responsibility. Good one, Governor. Yeah. <laughs> responsibility to make sure counties work well, <laughs> counties get enough money. But now they have been going around it because they are interested in becoming governors. They have uh, forgotten uh, their role. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they have forgotten their role. Yes. Uh, <laughs> as, as can, can, yeah. can I so this accused? has been yeah. the problem, but counties are accountable. Okay. There is the Public Finance, Finance Management Act which is there, which guides they are subject to audit like <laughs> and other public institutions. And we have been being audited year in and year out. Every year we have been audited. You know, you know, you know Ken, <laughs> yes. Ken uh, my, my good uh, governor yeah. so, started very well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he has ended very badly. Yeah. I wanted to provoke <laughs> you. <laughs> 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 he has ended very badly. Look at you. are waiting for two no. <laughs> he, he, he started by saying that there are audit reports. Yeah. Uh, which reports uh, paint a very uh, bad picture yes. on, on, on the management of resources in the county governments. Then, then he deflects and says he blames the senators uh, for that. I don't know what role we would have, would have in the management no. of resources in, in the counties. No, that, 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 those, those are decisions. Those are decisions. You have a power in state in the yeah, counties. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. That's, I'm That's, I'm yes. That's what I'm coming. That's what I'm coming. You see, uh, Governor, the question has never been whether whether devolution is a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. I mean, that that question should never even be asked. Yeah. Devolution is the best thing that ever happened mm -hmm. in this country after independence, if you ask me. The question has been, are governors sufficiently accountable in the management of resources allocated to them 
from the national government, or from uh, conditional grants, uh, from own revenue collection, and I see a big no, they have not been. You cannot begin, you know, you must compare apples with apples. G give an example. I'm, I'm coming there. You <laughs> must compare apples with apples. Give examples. You, you, cannot, you cannot compare yeah. the state of a village in Kitui today mm. and that same village eight years ago mm. when there was no devolution. Mm. Because you see, at that time, the the technocrats would sit in boardrooms in Nairobi and make decisions about, about some remote place they don't even know. Whether resources ever get there or they don't get, get there, those technocrats don't care. Today, the people of Kitui have elected their governor, they have elected their MCR, they have elected their senator, their member of parliament. People, as she said, People who are close to them and people who are charged with the responsibility of making decisions about development in those villages. Mm. And so, to a very big extent, I don't know, I don't even say to a small extent, to a very big extent, there is real change in terms of development in the villages. But again, we have not just devolved uh, development. We have also devolved corruption. And in fact, in most cases, it's not even, I say, there is a big difference between corruption and theft. In most counties, it is theft. It's, it's not corruption. corruption. Oh. What is the difference, my friend? In, in fact, <laughs> in, lest you associate me with supporting, my point was, my, my objection was with that statement, okay. but I agree yeah. fully that we have a problem of corruption. And yeah. the point I made from the outset is that problem is also manifest at national yes. level, mm. and we have do devolved that culture. Right. So the issue is not not to devolve. The issue is how do we deal with the monster of and the fact and the fact that a governor has brought some semblance of development in my village is no reason for me not to ask for more. I mean, I can't say because this road has been made. The uh, now, if, if they if they if they steal money for for water, yeah. it's okay. They brought the road. No, 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 no. You, ask, an you ask for more from the governor. There's an argument, he governor. Has done a budget already. No, no, and we'll ask for more development budget, yeah. because once you have developed one unit, yeah. it doesn't stop you there. Yes. You, you continue developing and, yeah. and people, and the good thing about what, Kenya what, today what is that they are more sensitized, more mobilized develops. to ask questions, the right questions okay. uh, about their own. Senator, what I, you would have said is mm. that as the governor develops, yes. you, you are fighting for more funds. Yeah, yeah, yes, so yes, yes. So we do that all more the time. Yes, yes. yes, we do that all the time. There's, yeah. there's an but argument. Accountability, yeah. is, yes. accountability yeah. is key. Is key. Yeah, Governor, yeah, there's an argument. Is very important. There's that an argument that agree. let's just give them a lot of money because even with the little that the counties have, yeah. we have seen yeah. something they've yes. done. Yeah. So yeah. let's continue giving yeah. them a lot of money. Even if they steal, they will do more with the more money we're giving them. No, not really. The converse is also not the is not right. Where you say we can't give counties money because they are stealing, and the government that is refusing to give the money is also, also the same thing. So we have a problem of theft. But, but you see, that's what I, that's why I started, Ken. That's yeah. what I started. I said by yeah. saying that give counties, let, let funds follow functions, yeah. okay? Exactly. But let the people who are stealing public finances or resources be arrested, charged, convicted, and jailed. Okay. Yeah. Don't well, don't 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 say we will not give them more money because they will steal. No, yeah. you can't do that. In fact, give them more money, but the people who misuse those money, but, uh, misuse the little. In, in fact, yeah. the Senator, problem is the you have said you have clearly said here that uh, uh, some have been actually stealing. It's not even corruption. Yes. How come you, at your own, you have not brought this up that this is so and so who is stealing, and he must be dealt with. Can We've I seen a few come to court. Actually, the point uh, I was going to oh, make... I'm yeah? where the governor lives. The point, the point <laughs> I was going to make, yeah. we have a problem with our oversight yeah. mechanism. And yeah. it, yes. it stems for two, from two things. One, our electoral process. Mm. We are getting um, into legislatures, people who shouldn't be in legislatures, mm. because once they get in there, they're not performing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's because of the breakdown of chapter chapter 6. Uh, those loopholes that were introduced allowed people who go in and they are subverting processes. Let's call a spade a spade. Mm. So political parties actually were forced to front some candidates they mm. didn't even want. Mm. Okay. And once those candidates get into office, it's a disaster. And they then go and bribe assemblies 
So you have now... So what is the solution to that? You need... So one, if you yeah. have weak yeah. electoral laws, okay. yeah. you will never fix governance. Yes. Can we please acknowledge that? But they say we, don't, we, we, we have really good laws. The problem is, is the, the implementation. implementation. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the other aspect is this. We have in... Um, we need to look at our administrative sanctions because parliament uh, and possibly even senate can make a resolution on a county and that resolution does nothing. Mm -hmm. The court can also uh, give direct directions to the executive and nothing happens. So our oversight is not working. Okay. It is not possible actually to fight corruption through the courts alone mm -hmm. because you have to prevent corruption through those exactly. internal audit committees, exactly. through those sanctions where you can remove somebody. You need stronger administrative checks in the first instance. Thank so you. our oversight process Thank is you. really, really Thank not you. working. Thank you, my sister. And yeah. I would want to hear what the governor say about that because yes. uh, Ken, uh, around October, the Council of Governors uh, sat and issued a statement and, and I was shocked by that statement. Yeah, that was they it. said that as senators should not oversight governors individually. It must only be done in the Senate and after the reports have come out. And I say, this then becomes a PR exercise. Because what she's saying is that don't wait for the patient to die. Treat the patient and try to stop them from dying. Let's be proactive in the management of resources allocated to counties, let's be proactive in the fight against corruption by dealing with it before it happens. Not to wait until the Auditor well, General yeah, says yeah. there is this money that has well, been sold. So what will you do with that? Senator, there must be a mechanism yes. that you have to use. Yes. If it's oversight in going to fin roads and planning of course, that is not, that's not God oversight. Go to the governor. Of course, that's not then oversight. Then you are saying, oh, money was stolen, and you know, that's not oversight. You know, I would not add what they said again. Yeah. They said yeah. that don't give Senate yeah. money for yeah. oversight. Yeah, they, they, they must be a But they want, they want the Senate to fight for them to get yeah. more funds. They yes. must, yeah. There <laughs> must be a mechanism, proper mechanism. If you are the senator for Kitui, how can you engage the governor there? How can you sit with the governor? Say the governor, I've noticed this, yes. I've noticed this. Can we now see yes. how to deal with this exactly? Issue? But if that mechanism is not there, then it, it why is it not there? It's in the law. I, why, why is it not there? And you find that why is it not there? in yes. both cases, governors and senators don't sit together. They don't, yes. They why don't. Why, so, don't they? why don't you sit with the, your senator? Me, me, I have no problem with the current <laughs> senator. I had a problem with the previous one I sent home. <laughs> <laughs> who wanted to be governed? Who sent him? Who sent him? Is you or he beat him? He beat him, beat him, him, so, beat him so he sent him home <laughs> because he he the election. But but you you must you must in the same yes uh, come up with a mechanism yes. of how do you engage your governor at that level yes at the, uh, the grassroots it's level important and if you see there is something that is not going on properly then you are able to deal with it there okay. Instead of going in public paralysis mm -hmm. and making pronouncements, mm -hmm. then, then that creates a, a problem Agreed. for you to come together. I think I support fully okay. yeah. um, that oversight should not be exercised as a political yeah. kind Tool. of yes. 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 It should That's be true. done through the uh, proper process, yeah. through the com relevant committees, yes. using yeah. a proper uh, a due process. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to speak about one more thing. There is pro Sorry, on okay. the oversight. Yes. Why do we never consider the role of the county assembly? Because county assemblies are very weak at present. But devolution will not work properly until we strengthen county assemblies. And it's interesting, we are having a conversation here, and there's been no mention of the oversight role of the county the assemblies. So what, what do you think? How do you think we should strengthen the county assemblies? That is the conversation. But I think there is a committee system. There is a committee system in the county assemblies, yes. which should uh, carry out uh, the oversight function for the executive arm mm -hmm. of, of county governments. And that's what they do. And, and, and they keep, I think they and do it. it the, the, yeah. thing, the thing is that we working? need to do, let me, tell, let me be very honest on this one. Yeah. The thing that we need to do is to build capacity yeah. within the, the county assemblies. Uh, so that they are able uh, to do proper 
uh, oversight yeah. uh, of, of functions of the executive arm of, of, yeah. of government. But they do a good job, by the way. It begins with the, the vetting of, of the uh, staff, CECs, the, the chief officers, uh, and then they're doing a good job at it. We just need to build capacity, yeah, yeah. and then they'll be able to be there. Counties have Definitely. lobbied for their own budgets. I think Senate was supporting that the county budget would not be linked to the executive budget. Uh, that's what it is. Yes, yeah, that's how it is. That's what it is. Separate. They have their own budget. They have their own budget. Yeah, budget. Yeah, they have they have their budget. Own budget. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, even a, a location from CRA. It's totally different. They handle their own business, which is a good thing. They mess it there. That's not the problem with the executive. Yeah, yeah. There's a proposal which I think came from me, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. instead of the uh, amount of money that has been allocated, the percentage that has been allocated in the constitution, the governors want to push the national government to go 50-50 with that yeah. in terms of revenue allocation to the county. Yeah. How, how, what is the parameters? How is that even practical? Now, we, we, we have clearly said that um, uh, before we even t talk about the allocations, we must look at the costing. Mm. Costing, costing of functions. Function is mm. important. Okay. If you can see that the entire uh, medical services have been involved, entire agriculture has been, uh, been involved, distribution of water is entirely involved, electricity, even distribution, which is still being done by the national government, is devolved. If all these are costed, I can assure you that we will need a 50-50 sharing. If Revolution has to be effective. Can I think? I think actually, yes, is a very good point. Yeah. The, the issue about um, funds to to counties. Yeah. I, I don't think it will be clever for anyone to talk about a percentage, a blanket percentage, yeah. because the counties have what 14 functions yeah. which are devolved. Yes. Yes. The national government does 35 yeah. uh, functions. So why can't we cost each of these functions? both in the county government and in the national government yeah. and, and find out how much money in terms of percentage that needs to go to, to the counties yeah. and the money that we need to retain and at the national, the, the national, the national level. And, and then not, not, not forget this thing about if a function is devolved for heaven's sake, let the funds go to where that function is. Okay. Yeah. The money follow the function. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is... Um it's a police. When you look at some of the infrastructure on the ground, maybe it's uh, energy, uh, retic retic uh, electricity reticulation and all, those investments have not been done in a long time. So counties are inheriting sometimes very dilapidated infrastructure. They're expected then to deliver in some cases where infrastructure has fallen on them. So maybe a percentage mm -hmm. in the interim and then a costing process to mm -hmm. go alongside it because costing alone can't be done in a day. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, I like to take a look at this. I like all of us to take a look at this cartoon as we wind up because I want your comment on this cartoon. Let's play. Right, uh, that's corruption. Good luck. Wako leaves and the new ESCC boss, he, he tells him, good luck. So the corruption has been magnified as a big thing and uh, ESCC is not... Um, even sure that the new boss will fight it because the boss is really small down there and corruption is big. I, I like your opinion on this. I'll begin with you, Senator. Your opinion on this impression of corruption because we are talking about the counties. And uh, as you answer that, we asked earlier around uh, 4 p.m. the biggest challenges to devolution. And they were listed as corruption, nepotism, favoritism, uh, lack of goodwill, and the eating mentality. Mm. Your comment on that? <laughs> <laughs> the eating mentality, of course. Yeah. Now, um, on, on corruption, uh, Ken, I must, I must agree with that cartoon. Corruption is it's a big, big challenge, not just for devolution, 
but for the future of this country. It has become so institutionalized that there are people who believe you can't get anywhere without corrupting your way through. And I want to say, not just good luck to the new uh, ESCC boss, but I want to say that the new ESCC boss, really, the future of this country, as you speak now, rests on his shoulders. Because for me, and I will give a personal example, I have raised a number of issues um, in the management of public resources in my county. And there are some people who have the audacity to tell me that the ESCC was here and did not arrest anyone. Where do you think we'll get with this? That's how deep this thing is. So I want to say good luck to the new ESCC. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thing. Governor. Corruption is there at both levels of government. And we must accept this. And I think the new leadership at the anti-corruption is now doing something. We hope that in, in the near future, the word corruption will disappear from our lips. Otherwise, there is a lot of corruption in this country. But maybe we, might, we may look at the structures, the governance structures that we have, the political structures themselves. Because there is a lot of fighting when it comes to leadership in this country. You, 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 even at parliamentary level, you find the money that someone is spending to become a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. It's not the, equal to what he earned yeah, in what the five he's years. Going to earn. Mm -hmm. So it is the culture that now, if we are in power, eh, this is our time to eat. Mm -hmm. So so long as there is that, uh, we have that structure, that we have political structures that we are having, we must think of how do we get our leaders on board. Okay. Otherwise, we will continue with the same system Corruption will continue. Okay. I think yeah. the governor has spoken very well. Like, actually, you could almost be in civil society yeah. because the problem is, yeah, we have a major political problem. It cuts across the divide. And I think it's not the EACC that is coming to end corruption or fight corruption. Everyone has to. Even the church has to fight it because corruption has reached its tentacles right across and it is going to undermine our development. The other risk, though, and it's surprising it's not there, is the fiscal gap. The indebtedness of our country actually has a direct bearing on the amount of money that's available for basic service delivery. And I think this focus of spending a lot of money on large infrastructure projects and ignoring basic service delivery, ignoring the soft aspects, uh, public participation, aspects of accountability, reforms like reforming uh, physical planning acts, uh, physical, generating physical uh, you know, plans that can allow development to take place, uh, reclamation of land. You know, so I think corruption is a big problem. Fiscal gap is also another problem, but also ideologically we have to uh, focus on those soft aspects that will allow us really to realize the, the plans and the dreams that are in our Vision 2030 and in the Constitution of Kenya. Okay. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, a time bar shortly, but even as we end, we are having the devolution conference later next month, and uh, they're going to spend 94 million shillings to host the devolution conference. He will be definitely the man in charge of the devolution conference. So before he speaks about what to expect, because the notion is every year we go in, this will be the sixth, we go in, speak, get out, but Nothing changes. The governor's came upon complaining. You're not sending his money in time. You're not doing this. So nothing changes, but they have the conference. Let me begin with Senator on the devolution conference. What perhaps different thing would you like to see uh, during the sixth uh, devolution uh, conference? Thank you. Um, the sixth devolution conference um, uh, comes at a time that we have a new COG chair in the name and person of uh, Governor Wycliffe Oparanya, who is seated with us here. My challenge for him and for all of us who will be participating in that uh, uh, conference is that I think this country has had enough of, of wrangling and, and conflicts between senators and governors. 
the challenge that we have in the sixth devolution conference is to put in place mechanisms of proper engagement between the governors and senators, and especially on the matter of corruption. So that when, when we say let us fight corruption, it is not them against us. It is all of us united in the fight against corruption and proper management of public resources in the counties. That to me, if we can just achieve that one, an establishment of proper mechanisms of engagement, of engagement between senators and governors, then we'll have taken a devolution and Ochai. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the, counts, the, the conference is very important because it's important for, for governors also to show. Uh, and, you know, that money I don't think comes from the county coffers necessarily. There are a lot of sponsors who come, come on board in, to yes. support it, and it's an important place to dialogue. I, I mentioned the amount to show the magnitude of seriousness. How yeah. serious, yes, eh? Yes, that's exactly not, that's not to show that it's yes, that, that's not in a negative money. way. No, no, that's, that's the amount. Yeah, yes. that's the amount. times 47 times 2. Yes. Uh, so oh, yeah. That's, a, that's yeah. 94 million. million. That's so what you get contribution from. It's an important, counties. very important conference. Like I said before, the agenda I'd like to see on the table is decentralization, is more effective public participation, um, and to have the principle of subsidiarity taken seriously. I think there's a handful of issues that we put, that is fa uh, facing devolution. Um, but I think also what the senator said is so important. Art Article 6 talks about consultative and cooperative government. The, you cannot implement devolution without good coordination between the national and the county. And so not only do we need the Senate to come on board, we also need the other arms of government to come on board. The County Government Act anticipates that uh, there will be, at county level, a framework for coordination between the governor and political leaders, Article 91F. This is not implemented and it hasn't been implemented in most counties. I don't think there's any county that has these regular conferences so that national political leaders are supposed to have a role in the county uh, budget making, planning, and development process. Governors need to open that space okay. by uh, really operationalizing the County Government Act fully. Okay, Governor. Yeah, first of all, let me take this opportunity to welcome all the stakeholders to the next the Sixth Revolution Conference, which will be held in uh, Kirinyaga from 4th to 8th. Uh, this issue you have talked about, we have had several uh, devolution conferences and nothing has come out. It's actually critical. And I will agree with what Senator said, that we should use this chance to sit down mm. with senators, with other stakeholders, MCAs, members of parliament with the national leadership and discuss the challenges facing devolution yes. at that level. Mm -hmm. Because that will be the right forum for such a discussion. Because at the moment, devolution conference attracts quite a number of people, number of major stakeholders, the private sector, NGOs are there. And this would have been the correct forum to engage all these people. And by the time we live there, we will have now come up with a solution to some of these problems. But the way we have now, we are going to discuss about uh, Agenda 4, which we have very little role uh, at it the moment. It will be your first time yeah, interacting it, it, with it. Is, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. this, yeah. You see, so it, it is not going to help us. Okay. So I will agree with what both of them have said, that let's use the future future devolution conference to discuss some of the issues that we have discussed today and that will help to strengthen devolution in this country. Okay. At the end of your term as a chair of COG, what would we expect to see different in terms of these engagements that uh, you're talking about? In fact, my first thing I want to do is to strengthen this engagement, mm -hmm. both at the National Assembly and at the County Assembly, even at the judiciary. Because there are things that you can solve by sitting down and discussing this. Mm -hmm. And also uh, do more engagement uh, even at the Treasury, at the control of budget, mm -hmm. so that some of these issues that you complain, mm -hmm. people come here, we are able to solve at that level quietly. Okay. That is what I want to achieve. Okay. Yes. At the end, at least you set one agenda that is achievable. Yes.